Hi guys, today we're gonna to be talking about fluid. And while it's really important for us to understand, it's also important that we have fun as we're learning. So we're gonna be talking about the different cells in the body. And like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, it's really important for our cells to be just right. Um, too much is bad and too little is bad. So we've got three gummy bears up here. And I'll put these guys down um, to show you the, the different stages that come with fluid. Now, it wouldn't be any fun if we didn't actually do this to our bears. So you're gonna see here that we have one cell that is just super jiggly. It is not helpful at all for our body. You can see that it is um, falling apart. And I don't know about you, I wouldn't want a brain cell or a kidney cell that is doing that. On the other hand, we have this other guy that is having some issues and he has lost a lot of his color. Um, he's hard and not very squishy and definitely would not be a tasty gummy bear or a good cell to have. So when we're talking about cells um, and fluid, it's important for us to understand where fluid is. We have three spaces in our body that fluid is kind of stored and, and worked with. Um, there's the intracellular space, so that's the inside the cell. There's the extracellular space, so that is outside the cell, sometimes called interstitial space, or if you'll hear people say they're third spacing, that means that fluid is coming outside the cell. And then there's the intravascular space, and that's the space inside our blood vessels. That's the space that we is really important for us to have blood pressure and pump and feel that fluid volume. So when you're feeling somebody's blood um, heartbeat, you're not only feeling if they have one, but you're feeling what it is and how it feels, if it's bounding or if it's thready and weak. Those are important things for us to understand as we're assessing patients. Now, this is a lot like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, okay? Too much, too little is bad, but in the middle is just right. So let's start with our really big, overgrown, gelatinous little gummy bear. What kind of solution would that cell have been in? And this one would have been in a hypotonic solution, which means it doesn't have a lot of solutes. It doesn't have a lot of anything in it. Examples of this are water, which is important for us to live, but it is really dangerous if we get too much. And um, half normal saline is one that we probably use um, at, our, at the facilities and at the hospitals and stuff. What's happening to this cell if it has too much water or half, too much half normal saline, that fluid is going in the cell. Now, if fluid goes in the cell, it's okay sometimes, but if those cells start getting too full, like that gummy bear that was wiggly and squiggly and breaking apart, that's not a happy cell. What things do we have to watch for? So when we're assessing this patient, we're gonna be looking again for that bounding pulse. That means that's um, fluid is in the in, in the vascular space. There's too much, okay? Their blood pressure may be elevated. Again, showing that there's so much volume in that space. Everything we're gonna do for this patient, all the goals are going to be to get fluid out. So our goal is to get fluid out. We want to remove that fluid out of there so that we can have return to a happy, healthy cell. So we have to figure out why is there fluid in there in the first place? Is it because we did too much of a hypotonic solution or is it because of a disease process? Some diseases decrease our albumin in our, in our vascular space. And if they decrease that albumin, it's a protein that kind of helps keep everything um, balanced in the vascular space. Um, it does a lot of other things too and healing and all that kind of stuff but this, for this we're using it mainly as this um, our albumin decreases so then our fluid shifts out so um, something that we would want to make sure is to assess that lab value of albumin and our electrolytes because um, again that fluid shift can cause a lot of problems so if we're trying to fix it we may give albumin to help get the fluid out of the cell into the vascular space and then we may give some Lasix to help get that fluid out. It's really important that we get the fluid not only out into the um, interstitial space but we get it out into the vascular space so we can get it to the kidneys and get it out. 
If you have somebody with really bad edema in their leg, it's not gonna matter if you give them Lasix, they're not necessarily gonna pull the fluid out of their leg to get in the kidneys. It has to get to the vascular space so it can be transported to the kidney. So then it could be um, excreted and pushed out. If this is a hypotonic solution and it makes our cells big and fat, here's our cells when they're in a hypertonic solution. So this means lots of solutes um, in the solution. So what are some examples of this? This is going to be um, like your 3% normal saline. Um, we give those to our head traumas very specifically to create this because you cannot swell um, in an encapsulated area. It's really important that we don't swell that space, right? So we want to take down some of the swelling. TPN is something that is a hypertonic solution. Um, will look, ever look at a patient that has a TPN going? Look at what all is on that bag. There's a ton of solutes and electrolytes and all sorts of stuff mixed right in. Um, other things that are um, uh, hypertonic solution is D5W with normal saline. So when we start adding um, our solutions together, even if they're considered an isotonic or a hypotonic, once we start adding stuff together, we now are creating a hypertonic solution because we didn't change the volume of the fluid we're giving, we only changed the concentration. So that's really important to understand. Our goals of care, because we've talked for our hypertonic, the fluid's coming out of our cell, which again, if you have a head trauma, it's something we might want to do. But if we've got a normal person that's coming in, we don't really like their cells to be all wrinkly and raisined up and shriveled. All right, so um, our, our goal for this patient is gonna be to get fluid back in. So to return fluid where it needs to be, to get fluid into the cells. All right, so how are we gonna do that? We're probably gonna give some fluid resuscitation. So depending on what your doctor ordered, we're probably gonna give some fluid resuscitation. Oh, I can't spell today. Um, we're gonna be making sure that we're monitoring vital signs. Uh, somebody with a pulse where they are have low fluid volume in their vascular system is going to have what we call a thready pulse. You kind of feel it. It doesn't feel nice and bounding. It doesn't feel good and palpable. It's that thready pulse. So they're going to have a thready. They might have a fast one. It might be an increased heart rate because their body's trying to pump as much volume as it needs, but because there's not as much volume there, they might be starting to pump lower your blood pressure may go down again because it's not in that vascular space. So it's really important that we check where things are um, and understand where the fluid, we want that fluid to shift to. So we've got that hypertonic solution. It is all wrinkled up. Um, a really simple example of this is when you go out to the bar and they nicely give you a salty snack. Why do they give you that salty snack? They give it because this is what's going to cause, um, salt causes those cells to kind of shrink up um, and say you're thirsty, right? Triggers the brain, says, hey, you're thirsty, so you buy another beverage, all right? Um, they aren't doing it just to be nice. They're actually playing with your physiology to make a buck. So understand that when you go out to eat, but they like to give you salty foods because then you buy more drinks. Um, not always the nicest thing, but they gotta make a living too. So our goal being to chain or to get fluid back in um, you can, they can drink fluid if they're a person that's dehydrated, or we can be giving them IV fluid. Again, if we're drinking water, it's a hypotonic solution, so we have to be really careful. You can die from drinking too much water, and so it's really important that you're paying attention to what's going on. Things that we'll see um, that I'll really want to watch for this one too is our level of consciousness. I want to see how their, how their mentation is doing. Are they changing? Is, that, is their mental state um, declining. Um, that's going to be our biggest thing. The other thing when we do fluid resuscitate, slow and steady. Okay, they say it's, it's not the fall that kills you, it's the sudden stop. And fluids are very much the same way. It's not that slow chronic change of fluid status that causes a, a huge problem um, until you're absolutely at the end because your body will accommodate it and change to meet it but it's that sudden fluid shift that's gonna cause problems. Either we slam fluid all of a sudden into the cells and those cells don't know how to handle it and they rupture, or we suck fluid out of those cells and they shrivel up and then they can't do their job. 
Ways that we're gonna know if cells are working is we're gonna assess labs. We talked a little bit. Um, depending on what's going on with your patient may depend on what lab you wanna check. But sodium and potassium are pretty normal labs for us to check. I wanna know if you're, what your BUN and your creatinine are doing so I know if your kidney function is still good because maybe you're getting into one of these states because your kidneys aren't getting fluid out and they're not working. Or maybe um, your kidneys are working too low and they're pushing stuff out. And so we wanna know what's going on. My electrolytes, I wanna know. My sodium is my brain. A lot of stuff with my brain. Potassium is a lot of those muscle um, and cardiac functions. So those are kind of the things that I really quickly wanna assess. I also wanna assess hemoglobin and hematocrit. And while, while this isn't a huge, as big of a deal, um, your hemoglobin times three equals your hematocrit. And if you see that that hematocrit is off based on that, so you have a hemoglobin of eight and you have a hematocrit of 24, that's great. If you have a hemoglobin of eight and a hematocrit of um, 34, we know that there's some fluid shifts and there's some fluid um, issues going on. So you can kind of use that as just a, 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 a leverage or a, a way to pay attention. So we've talked about hypotonic, making that cell way too fat, unhappy cell, rupturing. We've talked about um, hypertonic, way too many solutes, shrinking that cell. Um, so now let's talk about just right. And just right is gonna be considered isotonic. So this means that there's as many solutes in that fluid as out of that fluid. And with this one, the fluid's gonna go in and out as a normal function, as a normal functioning um, cell, right? Make sure I've got the right amount of arrows. All right, so isotonic, there's fluid going in and out. It's a happy cell. Things that are this, your normal saline, okay, which is 0.9%, um, your LR, lactated ringers, and your D5W. These are considered isotonic solutions. So you're gonna see LR a lot when we go to um, people get ready for the OR. They seem to like the, like LR for that. Um, it has a little bit of um, electrolytes in it, but not a ton. And you've got D5W, you wouldn't necessarily wanna give that to a diabetic patient because they already have high sugars. D5W is dextrose 5% in water. And then your normal saline, and this is the one we probably most commonly see in our patients. We get fluid boluses, all that kind of stuff with normal saline. So that's. That's kind of the most common one, um, but these are some other options. Things that we're gonna wanna monitor with this patient or interventions. We're still gonna wanna watch vital signs, right? Because we want a stable blood pressure. We want a stable heart rate. Um, we want them to return to what is their normal and their baseline. Um, we still wanna assess everything on our patient. If, if they should have a thready pulse, that means Maybe we need to up our fluid a little bit more. Maybe we need to, if they have a bounding pulse, maybe we need to decrease. Too much of a good thing is still too much. So even though these are balanced for our typical body, that doesn't mean we can't fluid volume overload somebody accidentally. We can still be giving normal saline for too long and that overloads us. So lung sounds have crackles, um, I, you've got that bounding pulse, any of that kind of stuff is going to tell us that we've got too much fluid or if we're watching other stuff happen, we're giving too little fluid. So it's really trying to maintain. So your goal for, for this one is to maintain it. We want to keep it a happy, a happy cell. A happy cell is a good cell. So think about that as you're working with your fluids and your electrolytes and what kinds of things that you have to pay attention to. Remember, labs are always important. Your um, fluid cells, we don't want too much. We don't want too little of a cell. Um, we want them just right. So understand what we have to do in order to get fluid out um, and take care of the patient. Because the last thing you want is to have a patient with a wiggly cell or a hard cell. We want our patients to have cells that are just right. Have a great day and let's get ready to learn some more.